You're listening to the Audacious Church Leadership Podcast. We know this will be an incredible resource for your life. So stay focused, listen up, and thanks for joining us. Hello and welcome to the Audacious Leadership Podcast. My name is Mark Foster, part of the team of Audacious Church and super excited to share with you today on the podcast about habits, healthy habits, what are some good things to get into and uh, how we can put those habits into practice, talking about your rhythm and all of those things. Before we get into the content, I want to give you a couple of book recommendations I'd love you to get hold of. We've got, firstly, Atomic Habits by James Clear. This is the best book on habit formation that I've personally read, and uh, you will absolutely love it. Most of today's content um, we're going to be looking at is from this book, Atomic Habits. It will really, really, really help. You can't recommend it enough. And the second thing, the second book, and I would love you uh, to put these books together, is Richard Foster's Celebration of Discipline. This is all about spiritual habits, um, some spiritual practices that you can get into your life. And I think the combination of these two books will uh, get you in a really good rhythm of looking at your spiritual life and also how you can get further habits into your rhythm of not just your week, but also thinking emphasis over the year. And so uh, the Richard Foster book split, split into three areas of internal disciplines, outward disciplines, and then corporate disciplines. And I love the way he just splits it into 12 easy spiritual practices that you can put into your life. I want to start by just reading um, just one little extract from the book from Richard Foster. It's um, looking in the area of meditation. He says, in contemporary society, our adversary majors in three things, noise, hurry, and crowds. If he can keep us engaged in muchness and manyness, he will rest satisfied. Psychiatrist Carl Jung once remarked, hurry is not of the devil, hurry is the devil. And uh, in our society, I guess we want more, we want to be doing stuff, we want to make sure everything's busy and full. And today's podcast, even though we're talking about healthy habits, we're not as much talking about just doing more things, we're talking about doing the right things. And I want that to be clear up front because, you know, you can be overwhelmed by the amount of things that you want to put into your life or you feel like you should put into your life, that it freezes you even before you get started. And uh, if we're in that place and we're never going to start to move forward, uh, we can have incredible goals, desires, dreams, and yet not make any progress simply because we're overwhelmed with the amount of things we feel like we should be putting into our life. So once again, we're not looking at just doing more things. We're looking about doing the right things today. We're also not going to look at goals and dreams and desires today. I'm going to assume some of those things are all already formulated in your mind, in your heart. And if they're not, then that's homework for you to do, just to think about what is it I want to be doing with my life? And more importantly than that, who do I want to be? What's the kind of person I want to be? What would I want others to say about me? We're not going to look at those questions today. What we're going to look at is more the how. How do we become the person that we want to be? And also, how do we get to do the things that we want to be doing? And so Atomic Habits is really a book about the how-to. We could have a dream, say, let's make this super practical of wanting a tidy room. We think that's, that's the goal, to have a nice, tidy space. And then we drum up the motivation, 
We're like, yes, come on, I'm, I'm going to get my room tidy. And we have a blitz. I mean, we just put a couple of hours in. We've got music. We've got the candles going. We're just so mo motivated. And by the end of two hours, our room is looking incredible. The problem with that is really the goal, the desire was not to have a tidy room. That was a destination. The goal was probably a little bit deeper than that. And you wanted an environment of peace. You wanted an environment of less chaos. You wanted an environment uh, that wasn't so cluttered. And so what you've done is solved an issue, but you've not really dealt with the root. And healthy habits are not just about achieving a one-time destination. They're about putting a system in place so that you can continue to live in this goal, in this dream, in this desire. Uh, a tidy room is not a one-time hit. It's about putting a good system in place. And what I want you to do today is think about the systems in your life that will set up your day-to-day, -day, how you live your life. And what we can do is we can actually formulate systems to create the results we're looking for. The truth is this, every single one of us, there is one resource that nobody is worse off than anybody else. It's a totally, uh, you know, equal society in this one area of resource, and that is time. Every one of us has 24 hours in this day. We've got seven days a week. We've got 365 days in the year. We have the same amount of time. And what I want, to, want you to think about today is how do you spend that resource of time? You are given that resource almost in your hands to spend however you want. Anytime you scroll through social media, you are making a decision to invest some of that resource that's called time into your social media. If you want to spend time with your kids, then again, you are choosing to invest some of your resource into time with your children to create memories and do all of those things. Wherever you put your time, it's a choice of investment. So again, the question is, are you investing into the right things that are going to cause you to end up in a place you want to end up? Again, these healthy habits are going to help you to invest this resource in the right places that makes the destinations inevitable. Tidy rooms will become inevitable, not just because of motivation, but because of systems you put into place. And so we're going to look at that. How do we create great habits from this book, Atomic Habits? They define atomic as an irreducible minimum. The book is not about overwhelming us with massive steps that we've got to take, but rather it's saying, how can we make incremental changes for maximum reward? It's the small changes that are going to create big change in our life. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to make any habit we want to put into our life, we've got to make it obvious. In other words, it's got a cue. It's got to be really obvious, the thing that you need to do. The converse can work on all of these things. If you're trying to get rid of an unhealthy habit, how do you get rid of an unhealthy habit? Habit is you make it really uh, hard to see. It, it, it's invisible or, or it, it's not obvious to you. But we're talking about healthy habits. Make it obvious. A couple of tactics here. Number one, habit stacking. Habit stacking. If, if I wanted a clean kitchen in the morning, it might start with a habit that I will never avoid, and that's eating my dinner. We're, we're just always going to do that. We're going to eat our dinner. It's a habit. We don't even really think about it as a habit because it's something we always do. Some of these habits are going to become like that. Habit stacking would say every time I eat my dinner, habit one, 
we're all going to take our plate and put it next to the dishwasher. That's the second part. The third part is we're going to clear all the food off the plate right there. And the fourth part, we're going to put the dish in the dishwasher. I know this is, this is incredible revelation. But then we would wipe all the surfaces. And so we've stacked up some habits that are going to make kitchen being tidy in the morning inevitable, simply because you thought of a system to make it so. That's habit stacking. And you can think about that in many other ways. How do I start my day well? What's some ingredients for you that would be starting your day well? And you can habit stack by saying, as soon as I get up, I'm going to drink a glass of water. And once I've drunk the glass of water, my, the next thing I'm going to do is pick up a book and read three pages. Simple processes to create habits in your life that will make a better start to your day inevitable. The second tactic there is just create your environment. And so that's just by placing things in your world that be, create visual cues, it will mean your, your habit formation is obvious. It's in front of you. One of the things I do, I want to go to the gym. And so every night when I want to go to the gym the next morning, I'll lay my clothes out right next to my bed. As soon as I get out of bed, the clothes are there. As soon as I walk down the stairs, my trainers are right by the front door. These are visual cues to make an intended, a ten, intended habit obvious. They cue. I wake up, see sports clothes. Okay, I'm going to the gym. Get down the stairs. Trainers are ready to go. I'm straight out the door. All of these things are helping us to have obvious cues. Second thing is to make it attractive, to, to initiate, have a craving. So this is the why. Why do you want to do these things? And so again, coming back to what we said earlier, what's the type of person you want to be? And what are the type of things you want to be doing in your future? They're the things that will cause you to have continued motivation. And this second part, making the habits attractive, is keeping those attractive desires in front of you. There's certain things that I'll listen to, podcasts I'll listen to, that I'm in a certain rhythm of habit, but I'll continue to listen to these things because they're refreshing me to the attractive destination I want to get to. And so I've got a craving to continue in a healthy habit. So you've got to know where you want to get to. Keep it in front of you. Another thing with social beings, and so you, the people around you are going to cause you to have an attractive environment. If you stay among the chickens, you'll never soar. But if you live amongst eagles, then flying will become natural to you. And so we've got to put ourselves in groups of people that we desire to be either the type of person they are or the place what they're achieving. And your habits will naturally find because your world is attractive, your habits will catch up. Put yourselves in groups of people. Make sure you spend time with people in places that you desire to go. Also, people can keep you accountable. And that's partly what a leadership life group will do in your life. The third thing, so we've got make it obvious, make it attractive. Third thing, make it easy. Make it easy. This is your first response. If you were to have a great goal of, you know, being a consistent runner and maybe even signing up for a 10K or a marathon or whatever it was you want to do, you know, if you were just to say on day one, I, I want to run a marathon, you're probably not going to do it because it's overwhelming. But I want you to think about any destination. What is the two minute version of that? Rather than having a goal to be a marathon runner, maybe you can say, well, today's habit, today's goal is to run down to the end of my road and run back. It's just two minutes. And then say, I'm not going to do any more than that two minutes. Because you can do that two minutes every day. And so over time, as you do two minutes every single day, that desire will build in you 
and you'll go, maybe I could do five minutes. And then it will continue to grow because the habit is being formed. You could even take this to an even more extreme, you know, and go back to what's the first 20 seconds. And the first 20 seconds of becoming a marathon runner is simply putting on your running trainers. Step outside the front door and then step back in. You watch, if you did that for 30 days in a row, guaranteed one of those days you're just going to walk to the end of the road. It's way easier to move, to steer a moving vehicle than one that stood still. If you don't have any habit in your life, it's hard to make any progress. But even if you put your running trainers on and step out the front door, you will find it a lot easier to make some progress towards becoming that marathon runner that you want to become. So make your habits easy. They've got to be easy. In your personal finances, you can choose to automate healthy habits in your finances. You've got an intention to start saving. The easiest way to do it is set it up that, and from one account, your current account, into a saving account. So you automate every month. So before you even get to spend any money, your savings is gone. You can automate many things in your life. So think about how you can make it easy. There's certain things I don't need to think about. I don't need to think about tithing because it's automated. I don't need to think about certain elements of giving because they're automated. And so all of these things mean great habits in my life are just automatic. They are so easy. And that's what you want to do if you want to create great habits. The fourth area is make it satisfying. In other words, what's the reward? When you finish the habit, how are you going to celebrate the moment? And so there's little things you can do. One of the things I do is have a cold shower. And at the end of my four minutes or however long I want of cold water, I've given myself at least 30 seconds where I'm just going to turn the water up to full temperature. And just that 30 seconds of full heat is incredible. It's almost like a mini reward that just gives you something at the end of a healthy habit to go, okay, I'm going to enjoy that. Maybe at the end of a month of putting on your running trainers, you say, I'm going to have a Krispy Kreme. Simply because you're, you're saying the reward is going to help you move forward in the habit formation. Other things that you can do is because we all love to see progress is you can have a habit tracker where maybe on a whiteboard in your kitchen or in your journal, you just put a tick every time you do that habit. I do that with a little book and I just put a cross and at the end of the month you can see, wow, it looks incredible to see you've checked things off your list, you've crossed off healthy habits. And so even that is a sense of reward to us when we see the progress that we're, made, that we're making. I've got a few questions for you for self-reflection. If you're in a life group, then you can. I want you to look at these questions tonight. These questions are all about application. There's no point having an intention for healthy habits if we're not going to do anything with it. And so I'm urging you, let's do something different as simple as the process we've talked about. Make the new habits, make them really obvious, make them satisfying, make them easy to do so that you can easily step up in getting these things done. The questions, number one is, what are some key habits you want to get into your life? What's some key habits? Maybe you want to read your Bible more. Just name the habit you want to get into your life. And you're going to share that with the group, if you're in a group right now. Number two, take one of your group's goals as an example for a new habit. And I want you to think together, how can this be made obvious, attractive, easy, and rewarding? So brainstorm together with a group, with some friends, how can you make this new habit obvious, attractive, easy and satisfying. Third question, choose one habit that you're going to write down to keep each other accountable before that you next meet. 
What's one habit that you can write down, you can give to a friend and ask them to ask you about it in a month's time? I hope today's podcast has helped. Remember, make sure you grab, if you can, Atomic Habits, James Clear. Also, Richard Foster's A Celebration of Discipline. And you watch if you make these changes, small incremental changes, they will make a massive difference in your life. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon. Audacious Leaders out.